Hey everyone and welcome back. So I want to do a review because uh, this past weekend, uh, which was Halloween weekend, uh, Regal Cinemas had a uh, limited showing of George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, the 3D version, which was done uh, about 10 years ago, I think. Now, because it was Dawn of the Dead, and as a lot of you know, Dawn of the Dead is uh, not only my favorite horror film, it's one of my top three favorite films of all time. It means so much to me, and obviously the, any chance to see it in the theater, you know, <laughs> like there's no way I was gonna miss that. So before I get to it, I just wanna kinda just very quickly explain uh, the history of the 3D. So basically, um, I want to say it was about 10 years ago or so, you know, sort of we were still in the middle of when 3D sort of went through that uh, resurgence on some level, and it seemed like every film, like I don't mind if a movie is filmed in 3D, I think that's actually really, really awesome, because we actually have a lot of films that were done like in the 50s and the 60s, uh, 70s, even like early 80s, that were actually filmed in 3D, and so to see them uh, in 3D, you know, is great. And then there was sort of that resurgence like Avatar and then films that followed that were uh, actually filmed in 3D. So it's great to watch those in 3D. But then we also went to that bizarre stage where it seemed like every film had to all of a sudden be converted to 3D. Uh, films that were not shot in 3D originally. And um, it's, well, fun, you know, because like a couple of them actually... You know, there were films that actually turned out really well during that conversion. It's, it's a digital, obviously... A uh, version where you actually have to go in and digitally manipulate uh, the image to tell like, okay, this is the foreground, this is the midground, this is the background and all that. And there were actually a couple surprising films that were uh, actually work like Jurassic Park, I remember actually worked pretty good. Phantom Menace was pretty good, at least with the depth. The one that really surprised me, I think was Top Gun. <laughs> actually, Top Gun in 3D actually uh, looked really, really good. But in the midst of that, I mean, people were jumping left and right, you know, to sort of jump on board. And uh, Richard Rubenstein, the producer of Dawn of the Dead, um, decided he was going to convert Dawn of the Dead to 3D for whatever reason, um, and managed to, if I if I understand the history correct, uh, managed to convince Anchor Bay, which was still around at the time, uh, to help fund uh, a 3D conversion of Dawn of the Dead. Now the problem is by the because you know that's not like something you do overnight. It's a very involved process, um, and unfortunately by the time it was done, I think two things happened. One, I believe Anchor Bay was basically pretty much out of business <laughs> by that point, and also the 3D thing had kind of like kind of dissipated quite a bit. And basically outside of like one or two screenings, this thing literally just like sat on the you know well digital shelf uh, for a long time. And then um, I remember, I think there was a screening during one of the Living Dead weekend conventions, if I'm not mistaken, because I believe that's where a buddy of mine had seen it. And then really, this is the first time that the 3D version has really been able to be seen by, you know, for the most part, like the general public. And it was obviously a deal that was struck with Regal Cinemas. So a lot of Regal Cinemas across the across the U.S. anyway, uh, or we're showing it over ha Halloween weekend. It was like a four-day event. It was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Now, this is a different restoration than what Second Sight did for their 4K release. Uh, was that like two years ago? Um, it's too complete. Like, again, this restoration of Dawn of the Dead for 3D was done, I, I think, plus minus like 10 years ago. Um, so it has some interesting uh, things to it, and I'll cover that in just one second. This is something that was not overseen by George Romero. This was not something that, to my knowledge, was not also approved by uh, Michael Gornick. Now, George Romero did see parts of this. Uh, Richard Rubenstein did show him, I think, a couple scenes of what the 3D was like. And George did like it. He said, you know, just look right. It was a lot of fun. And um, I actually agree. I think the 3D... Um, effect is a fun watch. It's, you know, it does kind of make you, you know, want to watch the film in um, a new way because you see a lot of the depth because there are a lot of shots in Dawn of the Dead that are very uh, deep focus where, where, you know, you basically can see like a lot between the foreground, the midground, the background. So uh, those shots really just look great. And then you have other things where they added um, a couple like pop out effects, you know, it's a little like qu very quick added like CGI pop-out effects like when um a couple ones were like somebody you know a zombie was shot in the head and they're like just a couple extra bits of blood that you know they sort of fly after which again cool effect didn't like that it was added but at the same time like i mean it's 3d you know you kind of want at least a couple of those things now the restoration that was done for uh the film um again as i mentioned is different than the one that second sight did second sight restoration that was put out in 4k um in the uk uh in 4k and blu-ray hopefully 
that comes to the US at some point, but obviously 4K is a region free format and I highly recommend getting a copy of it because it is amazing. That, as far as right now, I would say is literally the epitome of uh, what Dawn of the Dead should look like. It's, it's you know, just shy of being perfect. And I really think like that is sort of the ideal version of Dawn of the Dead. This, um, there were a couple minor issues with, and I'm, I'll, I'll cover the 3D in just a second, but as far as the uh, transfer itself goes, or the restoration goes, like it looked good overall. Um, there were a couple minor um, specs of stuff. Um, I'm kind of forgiving about that. And I was glad the grain was intact. That actually was, I was kind of worried about that because usually for 3D, when, when a lot of times when a film is converted to 3D, that again was not shot for 3D and also shot on film, um, a, the temptation is to uh, kind of scrub it of the grain. So they would add, a, do a lot of noise reduction to kind of get rid of the grain to smooth out the image so the grain doesn't have a weird effect in 3D. Um, obviously, probably the most famous uh, one is obviously when Terminator 2 was out in 3D. That was totally like had a massive amount of digital noise reduction. And unfortunately, that's the version that ended up on the current 4K release. <laughs> you know, it's like, ugh. but that's a, you know, that's a whole other thing. Luckily, that was not done here. I mean, look, if it was done, it was done very um, on a minor level because I, there was definitely grain there. So you kept a lot of the detail of the image, which was great to see. Uh, there was a minor color fluctuations, nothing big. Um, I would say overall, there was a very, very slight shift towards green. It was a couple, it was noticeable in a couple shots and I noticed it in the skin tone where it just leaned a little bit towards green. Very, very minor. Most people probably wouldn't have noticed. I was kind of, I, mean, I was kind of looking for stuff, I, mean, I gotta admit. But overall, actually as a restoration itself, it was nice. Not second sight, uh, nice, but it was good. I mean, this thing had come out like several years ago. I'm sure I would have been ecstatic. Now, as far as the 3D effects go, I did mention, you know, they did add a couple of the, um, very minor CGI bits to just kind of make stuff to kind of jump out at you. Um, again, very minor, but it, I, I kind of don't like that it was added, you know, because it wasn't technically supposed to be there. But I, I again, watching it in 3D, I met it was fun, you know, having some stuff, you know, some blood kind of come at me. And uh, again, the depth in a lot of shots was really impressive. There was some weird anomalies that does happen when you do a post 3D conversion, which is just, I mean, unfortunately it's just hard to handle. I think no matter what you do, and that's the fact that there were times where if something was in front of somebody's face, like it's, I think the first one I noticed was early on in the film where Roger was holding his gun in front of his face and it just didn't, like it had a very weird anomaly around the shape of the gun and his face where the, you know, it sort of the depth didn't work. And I saw that a couple times whenever there was something covering something up, uh, specifically somebody's face, because I think that was when it was most noticeable, where it was just like, uh, yeah, didn't quite work too well. And again, I was looking for stuff like that, so I think it stood out to me a little bit more than it did uh, maybe some other people. Um, and it was just, it wasn't like too much. It was just a couple things here and there. But overall, I will say, actually, I was quite impressed by, uh, how well the 3D was done because there's a lot of room where it could have gone bad and it didn't, luckily. And as far as the audio goes, I thought it sounded really good. It, it was actually a stereo track. I heard a couple, you know, minor, like, stereo things. Now, the problem, though, is the fact that, uh, the theater, um, <laughs> you know, and I saw this a complaint a lot was the fact that the audio was very low. And that's because, you know, a lot of these theaters, because they weren't showing like, you know, several showings of Dawn of the Dead. Most of the theaters were showing one, maybe two showings in a, in that theater. And then they were showing something else, obviously, before that. And so if they're showing like some big, you know, current film, you know, Marvel movie, DC movie, what's the one out now um, with The Rock? Um, Black Adam, right? I think that's the name of it. You know, if they're showing something like that, when they were very bombastic soundtrack, and then they go to Dawn of the Dead, you know, movie from 1978, you know, you're gonna have to crank the uh, lever quite up just a bit in order to get the sound higher. So uh, I, I definitely noticed that with mine. It wasn't as bad, I think, as some other uh, places that I heard. But overall, I did think the sound quality uh, was really good, which I really appreciated, you know, because I was able to get kind of that full experience. Uh, so there's two things kind of going on here. Did Dawn of the Dead need to be converted to 3D? No. <laughs> I mean, it's like, is it my ideal way to watch it? No. Was it fun? Yes. Is it something like if I had the 3D version at home, would I gravitate towards it? No. I mean, would I watch it on occasion just 
<laughs> just because yeah i would if they put out a uh you know blu-ray 3d version of it but probably i do prefer uh, you know the the regular version and again the second sight restoration for me is uh the epitome of what dawn of the dead should look like but at the same time again it was fun and because i know the film so well you know i was able to kind of sit back and just enjoy it for what it was and you know enjoy those little extra bits and stuff the main thing to walk away from this though and this goes for i think a lot of us we got to see dawn of the dead in a movie theater some of us have you know i've seen it in a movie theater before technically um i went to like some screenings uh, when i lived in chicago the first time i went to it they showed the dvd and that was Oh, that was a weird experience because uh, they were having issues with the player. So the movie started playing, but it started playing with the commentary track. And it took them like 15 minutes to figure out how to <laughs> play the right audio. It's just like, oh God, that was such a bizarre experience. And then the second time I saw it, which is actually pretty good. They, they showed the Blu-ray. The, I think it was the old Anchor Bay Blu-ray um, projected. And so it looked you know, pretty decent and stuff. But that was fun because that was at one of those, like, uh, the horror events that I used to go to. So, um, you know, the theater was just packed and it was great to, you know, be in a room with, like, fans who would, you know, applaud and cheer and things like that. It's kind of something I didn't get this time, actually. I mean, there were actually... The a decent amount of people there on uh, because i went on sunday and i was actually kind of surprised that there were as many people there as there were and unfortunately they were pretty silent but at the same time you know what i'd rather have a silent presentation um you know as far as the crowd goes than people like talking or you know making comments or on their phone or whatever so i'll take I'll take the quiet over, you know, unfortunately some of the usual theater behavior we can sort of deal with. But the fact that I got to see Dawn of the Dead in a theater, I mean, it's just, like, it was amazing. Like that, if there's anything I can sort of take away from despite my little, you know, maybe gripes with some of the 3D and everything. Overall, seeing Dawn of the Dead in the, in the theater was absolutely amazing. I mean, the whole time I'm just, you know, just transfixed on the film. It means so much to me. Actually sit in a theater and like watch it because again that's not something you know i've never you know i didn't see it obviously I didn't see it when it came out by any means so it's like you know be able to see it and to see so many people going to see it this past weekend as well was so spread you know all the posts online and everything of people seeing it and sharing their experiences i mean it was just fantastic and what's great as of this recording anyway is that it did so well that regal cinemas is actually extending the run it's only gonna be i think like i said like three or four days and they're extending it at least another week i believe another week and a half so for some of you who may have missed it like you still have a chance you know seek out a, a regal cinema see if you can try and check it out while it's still playing so despite some minor gripes uh with the 3d i mean honestly at the end of the day it was such an amazing experience i highly Highly, highly recommended hopefully they do, hopefully they still show it i mean obviously like i said it got extended but hopefully they bring it back on occasion you know maybe this is i don't know if it's a yearly thing that they could do um or something but you know and hopefully maybe it'll actually inspire uh richard rubenstein to allow a company to you know finally release dawn of the dead um for a u.s release you know on video for those of you, you know, who can't get the second sight release, like that would be nice. You know, something positive really came out. I mean, this is positive, but you know what I mean. So I'm sort of rambling at this point. I mean, <laughs> that's the name of the channel. So obviously it's, I guess, expected. But to see Dawn in the theater just means so much to me. So um, if, if you guys saw it, definitely let me know what you thought. Which again, so happy to see that uh, so many people kind of went and saw it this weekend. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. That makes me really, really happy. Not just because I got to, you know, see it for myself and I have my own experience, but to see so many other fans get to go as well you know it's kind of one of those where like i think a, a lot of us um horror fans dawn of the dead fans george romero fans like you know we had we had our moment this past weekend and that's really special and i mean it's not that there's anything on it but i actually did keep my 3d glasses not that there's anything special but it's just like I mean, I paid for these technically with the price of my ticket. So yeah, I definitely kept the 3D glasses just, just to have them. So just some mindless thoughts on Dawn of the Dead 3D. Again, let me know your thoughts on it. If you saw it, if you plan on seeing it. If you have any questions uh, about anything else about it, definitely let me know. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.